<laughs> Hello, I'm Ryan from Oozness, and today we're going to get back onto doing a tutorial to the Work B CNC machine. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the cam side of things. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a spire to set up a toolpath file to quickly cut a logo in this piece of pine. We're going to use a spire, but you can use your other versions, VCub and Cut2D, to do the same thing as what we're going to do in this video. So let's get straight on with the video and move on to Aspire. So now we're in Aspire. If you're using Cut2D or VCarve, the process is exactly the same, so you can still follow this tutorial. So first, I'm going to create a new file. Here, it brings up Job Setup. And now first, we need to enter the dimensions of our workpiece. So I've measured ours previously. So ours is 250mm wide. 140mm tall and 20mm thick. Next is the Z0 position. So we want this on the material surface. I selected already. Next is the XY dating position. So by standard you'd usually have this at the front left. In some cases you'd have it in other positions but in this case we have it as, as the front left. A quick note on this, when we set up our machine later when we, after we hone the machine, we need to set the work zero, so we will make the work zero this front left corner so it matches our XY data position in the Vectric software. Once you set them, press OK. So in the centre of the screen here, you can see this is our workpiece. So what I'm going to do is cut a logo. So I'm going to import our logo file, so I'm going to go File, Import, Import Vectors, and now I'm just going to navigate on the computer to where our logo file is located. So let's just get it up. So ours is in a PDF format, so we can cut the Oozeness logo. So double click that, and that has opened it up. As you can see at the moment, the logo size is bigger than the workpiece size. So what I'm going to do is just select all the vectors. On the left hand pane, under Transform Objects, I'm going to go to the second one in, which is set object size. So click that, and then I just need to set the size. So earlier our workpiece was 250 wide, so if I set that to 200 and press apply, that has now scaled that down. So I'm going to press close. Now I've scaled it, you can see that it's not centered on our workpiece. I want it centered on our workpiece, so I'm just going to select the vectors again. Back to transform objects objects and then the one on the, the first option is move selected objects so I'm going to select that. First you can select your anchor position so I want to locate the center of our object to the center of the workpiece so I'm going to put the anchor as the center of the object. Next you have type of move absolute or relative I want to set the absolute coordinates so I'll leave that as so and then the XY position so our workpiece is 250mm wide, so I'm going to set the X position to 125. And then the workpiece is 140mm tall, so I'm going to set the Y position to 70mm. And press apply. apply. And close. So now you can see that our workpiece has the object centered on it. This is going to be a simple tutorial, so I'm just going to cut that logo. It's just, it's just to give you a demo of how to set up toolpaths. So the next thing, now I'm going to move on to our toolpath section. So on your right hand side, there's a little tab which is toolbar, toolpaths. So click that, and then press, and then press the little pin button to pin it so it doesn't disappear when you move off of it. So the first thing is material setup. So I'm going to press set on that. Thickness, this comes from what we set earlier, so that's already at 20mm. Same with the XY datum, that's set from the first, first thing we set, so that's at the front left, so that's fine. And same as the Z0, so we want that on the material surface. The model position, that is if you're doing 3D work, so you can just ignore that for now. The next section is rapid Z gaps. So this is how far the cutting bit will go above the material when doing rapid moves. 
you ideally want this greater than your clamp thickness so when it does do a move like that it will clear any clamps and not cut into them so usually I set this around 5mm that's a nice clearance for most things like so the next one is home start position so you can start your job from anywhere on the material but what this Z gap above material and this XY position are is basically where the cutting bit will go back to once it's completed the job so I usually set this to the same as my rapid Z gaps so 5mm we do see a lot of people get soft limit errors on their machine when starting jobs in 90% of cases it's due to the Z gap above material being too large because by default when you buy your Vectric software it's set as, set as 20 so just reduce this down to 5 and that should solve your problem so I've got it at 5 as set in here and then press OK so that's our material set so now what I want to do is pocket our logo out of the material so what I'm going to do is select all our vectors and you've got toolpath operations the second one in is the pocket toolpath so I'm going to click that the start depth is the surface of the material so I'm going to set that at 0 and our overall cut depth I'm going to set that to 3mm so I'm going to put 3 and also tick the box to show advanced toolpaths this gives you a few more options next you select your tool so I'm going to use a 1 16th bit down cut I have it already entered into our database so I'm going to select that here you can create new ones using this button below the tool list but I've already got a set when I name them I usually like to name them so I can come back to them using later jobs so I name what type of emerald it is what type of, type of fruit direction what material it's set up for and stuff like that this is a 1.587mm cutting bit which equals 1 16th in imperial. I'll set the pass depth for 0.5mm, the step over to 50%, the spindle speed to 27k, feed rate to 800, and plunge rate to 400. And we're cutting pine. What I just noticed, I need to change this title to 0.5mm to match my settings here. So press apply to save them, and press OK. So when you select your, your end mill, it will automatically work out the number of passes based on your pass depth and cut depth if you want to override this and change it just press the edit passes button and then you can manually change it here but I'm going to leave it at 6 next you can define how to clear this pocket so you can either do it as an offset or a raster it gives a little diagram to show the difference between the two I'm going to select it as offset I'm also going to put the cut direction as climb, like so. Next is pocket allowance. So for instance, if you wanted to leave a 0.2mm allowance around the edge or something like that to come back later and finish it off with a nicer bit, you can leave that there. But we're using quite a small bit, so I'm going to leave that as zero for now. Next is ramp plunge moves. So when the cutting bit cut, I'll start again here. So when the cutting bit is going down the next pass, it usually goes down straight. But what you can do, you can ramp these so it, it um, gradually makes its way down by going towards side to side, and it put, puts less stress on the cutting bit. So I'm going to tick yes, and set that distance to two mil. So basically, instead of going straight down, it will go down diagonally two mil. And then I name this pocket one as set by default, and press calculate. What that has done now is calculated our tool paths and shown them here on the 3D view. The Vectric software has a very good feature where you can preview tool paths so you can see what it looked like once finished. So what I'm going to do is just press this preview all tool paths button. And as you can see, you've got your preview here of how it will cut the, the uh, object out. And you can rotate this to get a good look to make sure it matches your idea. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to close this preview tool pass pane. You can come back to that with this bottom left hand button here, but I'm happy as it is. So we can't send this tool path direct to the machine from the Vectric software. So what we need to do is export it to a G code file 
and open this G-code file in Universal G-code Sender and send it to the machine. So what I'm going to do is tick this toolpath file. Under toolpath operations, go to this bottom hand button, bottom right hand button, press, and it's called save toolpath. So press that. The first option is output all visible toolpaths to one file, which is what we want. Next, it says toolpaths to be saved. So you can tick them down here, which ones to save. We've only got one, so I'm going to tick that one. Next option is the post processor. So the control that we use on the workbeat is GRBL. So you want to make sure this is set to GRBL millimeters dot G code. And then just press save toolpaths. Start to just save this on our computer. So I'm going to just save this as a logo cut toolpath. And then press save. And that's it. That's all we need to do for the Vectric software. So now I'm going to go over to the machine, connect using Universal G Code Sender, and carry on the tutorial from there. So here I am, the Work CNC machine. As you can see, with the work piece locked in place, I've got the machine switched on. So first, we need to connect in Universal G Code Sender. So let's go down to COM6, and then press the open button. An alarm state will show, so we need to hone the machine to set our machine zero. To do this, you press the dollar H button in UGS. Now, the machine zero has been set. As you can remember earlier, we set the XY datum to be the front left material and the zero to be the surface material. So next, we need to set our work zero to this corner. So what I'm gonna do is just jog this router over to there. So I've now got it roughly in position. What I'm going to do is use a touch probe to accurately find this corner. Watch one of our other YouTube videos linked in the description to see the process of doing this. Now, when you press return to zero, our work zero is now set to the front left corner and the surface of material. So now, we're nearly ready to send the file. So what you need to do, on Universal g -Code Sender, under the file section at the bottom left, go to Browse, go to where you, your file is located, click on it, and then press Open. Okay, now it says, gives you a number of the rows in file, so now it's correctly loaded. So what I'm gonna do next is set the RPM to what we set in Vectric, so number six, 27K RPM. And then finally, I'm going to turn on the D-Roll and then press send on Universal G-Code Sender to start the job. As you can see, the job is now complete. I hope you found this video informative. We went through some of the bits quite quickly. That is because some of the videos we've done go, go into more detail on the specific sections. And what we'll do, we'll link in the description. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.